Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina. If you are new here, here on my channel, I do bookish related things and I also do beauty. So if that sounds like something you'd like to be a part of, I say please subscribe here to my YouTube channel. And if you do like the video by the end of it, I say please give it a thumbs up. So as you can tell by the title, we're going to be doing my September and October wrap up. So it's quite a bit of books, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So um, since I'm combining September and October together, because I completely forgot about doing a September wrap up, um i'm gonna kind of do the wrap up a little differently i'm just still trying to get a feel of how i can do my wrap ups better so that way you know i can give better ideas of the books that i read for each month but overall the reason why i do wrap ups is to pretty much share what i read um and not really talk about them because i like i said i suck at doing that so i think on some of the books i will talk a little bit about them um, but then I'll probably just do like what I rated it, what I liked about it, and what I didn't like about it. So yeah. If that's so I only read two books in September. I read one with um, Bridget from Bridge and Books here on YouTube. We did a buddy read and we chose to uh, read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Ariyemi. So I actually rated this book a 2.5 star, but on Goodreads they don't necessarily they don't let you do half stars. So I ended up rounding it up to a three. I feel like if you're interested in wanting to read this book, it's definitely worth picking up. It's definitely something you should pick up just to read it, just to appease your curiosity. Um, so I decided to rate it a 2.5 star or three star um, because of I felt like the story was unnecessarily long I felt like it was longer than what it needed to be I felt like it took forever to get to the big point um the big plot uh and yeah it really I was really struggling to get through this one because in the middle I just felt like it was so unnecessarily long and my attention span was becoming very impatient so I'm glad I did get through it though and the only reason why I got through it was because I found it on audio available and I ended up listening to the rest of like the rest of the 200 pages that I had left with reading it physically. Um, I left it to the audio and thank goodness because I was literally so close to DNFing this book because of it. Um, so yeah that is the downfall for me personally was I just felt like the story was so unnecessarily long. Um, but I will say I did enjoy the magic system in this story. I enjoyed the culture, the history behind the magic. I enjoyed different kinds of magic. I enjoyed the fact that you can tell when somebody is of magic descent because of their hair color, their skin. I just, I loved the idea of behind the magic and the culture and everything in the story. Like I said, the only downfall for me was the fact that it just felt so long um i do plan on picking up book number two not anytime soon maybe like very 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 far future i don't know exactly when but i do want to pick it up just to kind of see where the story will continue i'm hoping that book two will be a little bit better than book one it'll pick up a little bit more it'll be more fast paced because literally this felt so slow and i struggled and i'm being completely honest um, I really wanted to love this book because so many people love it. But yeah, that's my only downfall with it was that it was it just felt really unnecessarily long. But I still do, like I said, want to pick up book number two. But it's probably going to be a while before I pick that one up. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump into the second book I read in September. The second book I read in September was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. Now this book I gave it a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this story. Um, I loved the paranormal in the story the shadow hunters who hunt demons the demons the witches the werewolves no werewolves there was no werewolves in here right i don't think there was so the demons the witches the warlocks the vampires and the whole idea of the the underground like club that incorporates the vampires and the witches so and the demons so yeah i really loved this story i really enjoyed it very much um I just I thought it was just written really well it really caught my attention from beginning to end uh, it would have been a five star um, but I don't necessarily feel like this story was life-changing so it's definitely a four star read for me um, I still enjoyed it very much I can't wait to read book number two um, what I didn't like about the story was the main character Tessa she just 
I guess it's the time era that this story is written in. She just very much like women can't do this because it's a man's job type of vibe. But it's because of the the time that the story is written in. So yeah. Or women should only wear dresses and not pants. You know like it's very much that. That's the only thing I could say. So that's the only thing that got on my nerves. But I get it. It's like the time era though. So if you plan on picking up any of like the Cassandra Clare books and you want to start with this, go for it. I really enjoyed it. Um, it has the paranormal aspects to it. It has some secrets. It has betrayal. It has death. It has romance. So, yeah. I really, I really, really enjoyed this story. But like I said, a four out of five stars for me. Um can't wait to pick up book number two i really don't have much to say about it other than like i really liked it so moving on to october i read quite a bit of books because i did pick up books that i was supposed to read in september and i went ahead and put them on my october tbr i wasn't trying to put a lot of books on my october tbr because i did host my very own first readathon in october which was called 13 nights of halloween so a lot of my books were for that readathon specifically, but I did manage to fit a few other books um, with my month of October with my 13 Nights of Halloween TBR. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first book. They're not in the same order that I read them in, but I'm just going to pick up whatever book is on the first stack or on top of the stack. Um, the first book is Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. This story I gave a four out of five stars um I've never read any of these books but I have seen all the movies to this one um and let me tell you the movies do not do the books justice at all this story has incest in it which is weird and gross but it does it has sexual assault it has child neglect child abuse and I mean even though like with all those the story was written really well um, in the story, we follow four main characters who are all children. We have Chris, Kathy, Carrie, and Corey, who have lived a very perfect life. Um, they lived with their mom and dad, and they've just they've had the very perfect life. A lot of people envy their life, you know. Just they just have a really good life, and they've never known heartache until their dad passes away. Um, he was in a very bad car accident which kills him on impact um, and this leaves their mother widowed and having to take care of everything including the bills um, but then they soon discover that their mom comes from a very wealthy family that they thought were dead until their father died and their mother starts spilling out a lot of her secrets from her past um, and this leads them into going back to her mother's hometown where her parents live and her father knows nothing of the kids because her mother has married her half uncle which causes her parents to cut her out of her will cut her out of their will and disown her because of the abomination by marrying her half uncle which is her father's stepbrother or half brother um so when they go back to their mother's hometown only the mother's mom knows about them and she wants to leave it that way she doesn't want her husband to ever know that her, their daughter has had children with the half brother or half uncle um so they end up locking the four kids into a room and the grandmother threatens them and tells them if anybody ever finds out that you guys are here including my husband i will beat y'all with a switch and you will go without any food so the kids are pretty much like shocked at how they're being treated they don't really understand but it's because the mother is still holding on to a lot of secrets um but the mother has promised them don't worry guys once my father puts me back into his will and i'm back on his good graces um he's dying soon so as soon as he dies i will inherit all that money and we will be free from all this to go live our life happily ever after without having to worry about money but her promises become having to stay in the room for a couple days um until those days become weeks those weeks become months and those months become years they only have access to an attic hence flowers in the attic because that is their only time where they can go run around where nobody will hear them and they're pretty much forgotten their mother has kept 
empty promises throughout the years that they have kept their kid that she has kept her kids um locked away in a room so yeah um i really enjoyed the read like i said there are some trigger warnings like sexual assault incest 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 um child neglect child abuse uh, but overall i thought the story was written well um it's I can't say I understand the whole dynamics of like the brother and sister falling in love with each other because they're with each other locked in a room like I can't say like I don't understand that at all I can't relate or feel like I understand because I don't but other than like I don't know I just I gave this book a four out of five stars because I really enjoyed it minus all the other you know all the trigger stuff <clears throat> I just I felt like it was just it was an interesting story so i've read this is the third book i've read by this author and they are those very twisted stories so far that i've realized or i've noticed so yeah, if you're into like twisted stories like that then these are definitely for you these are the next book i picked up for october was furthermore by tahira mafi i gave this book a three star <laughs> i was really hoping to like this story um but yeah I definitely feel like if you want to pick this book up, it's definitely worth picking up just to give it a try. Three stars don't mean that they're bad. They're definitely worth picking up. The downfall about the book was that it felt very, very, very middle grade, which I understand it is a middle grade read. Totally understand that. But whenever I'm reading like Percy Jackson compared to this, this is very, very like for like my 10 year old daughter. She would enjoy this because how immature it is um the main character is 12 years old so yeah that's the only thing i would have to say that i didn't like that it was very like very immature for me um i was expecting it to be somewhat like along the lines of like percy jackson you know like teenage vibes this is yeah um i will say i enjoyed the magic in here i thought the magic was written well the idea the story building i thought was really well the character building the like the world building everything was really good to me i enjoyed that um but the only thing I, was the downfall was that it felt very 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 childish so next book i'm picking up here is um a darker shade of magic by v e. schwabs um i actually dnf this one i got to maybe 30 pages in I didn't DNF it because I didn't like it. I just wasn't ready to listen to or read something like this just quite yet. Um, I did. I felt like if I would have kept reading this, I would have put myself in a slump because my mind wasn't fully invested in it. So I do plan on picking this one back up maybe in December. Um, but yeah, this is not some. I didn't DNF it because I wasn't liking it. I just wasn't clicking with the story like I was on autopilot to where like I was listening to it but it wasn't like processing so yeah I just wasn't mentally ready to pick this one up like I thought I was the next book I'm picking up here is Caravel by Stephanie Garber this was actually a reread for me um I gave this book a four out of five stars uh we follow main character Scarlett and Donatella who have been invited to Caravel through Legend who is like the leader of it all the ringmaster whatever you want to call him um he's invited them to participate or watch caravel they decide to participate tella is the one that gets captured and scarlet has to rescue her in order to save her life and to get this big wish that she will win at the end of it um i i liked this story even more the second time um, first time I read it physically, this time I listened to the audio and I really enjoyed the audio. I love the magic in this one as well. Um, the storytelling, the world, the whole Caravel games, I really enjoyed it. Definitely something I could see myself picking back up over and over and over. Because I just, I really loved the whole idea of the first book. The second book I have right here is Legendary by Stephanie Garber, which is book number two to the Caravel trilogy. This one, however, I gave a 3.5 star, so I'm going to actually round this one down to three star. 
Um, in this story, we follow Donatella. Obviously, Scarlet has rescued her sister in the games, the first games. So now we are following Donatella, who is trying to figure out where her mom is. So in this one, she's making deals with people she shouldn't be making with, especially people who have an idea of where her mom is or who knows her mom and knows where she's at. So Donatella is really making it her number one priority to figure out where her mom is and save her and just ask why she left them um, instead of taking them with her because their mom had gone missing years ago and they never heard anything like where she went they never heard nothing from her after she disappeared uh what i didn't like about this one was that i don't know i feel like donatella in this one was so her personality is ho so hard to like um i feel like she's very bratty um, but she's she is smart and she's very tough, but I just felt like it's either her way or no way type of vibe And I just really didn't like that. I felt like she was making choices um, Straight off of instinct or like in the moment Instead of really thinking about what she's doing and then realizing after she's made her choices that it probably wasn't the right choice to make So that was getting really frustrating um, so Yeah, I gave this book a, a three so now that brings us to book number three, which is Finale by Stephanie Garber. Now this one I actually really enjoyed again. So I gave this one a four out of five star. Um, we follow both, again, Scarlett and Donatella. They have figured out where their mom is. They've rescued her. And now Donatella has to have to figure out how to keep their mom safe because she was actually trapped in a card that... In order for her to get released, she had to t Donatella had to take her spot, but instead they went around the rules and ended up releasing a lot of people that were in cards that were not supposed to be released. The cards are like some form of prison for very powerful people, and these cards are like tarot cards. Um, so yeah, they were um, these special tarot cards that were imprisoning a lot of very powerful people, but because Donatella has... <clears throat> made that choice to free her mom so she made like this impulse decision again by freeing her mom she took her place in the card in the cards but legend there legend ended up like saving donatella since legend is very powerful himself he ends up saving donatella and just ends up freeing all these fates is what they're called yeah. those fates are people who want to take legend's powers away and they can because they're more powerful than him whenever they get all their magic back um, but yeah, in this story, I loved the romance in this. I loved the magic. I loved the whole coming together to defeat all the bad people. <laughs> so yeah, this was another good one for me. Like I said, I don't know what happened in like to book number two. I felt like, I don't know, I felt like it was kind of incomplete. I don't know, or rushed maybe i don't know yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into the next book that i have here and this is uh pumpkin heads by rainbow Rao and faith aaron hicks this is a graphic novel and i love this graphic novel i feel like i can pick this up over and over and over again i give it a five out of five stars it's so cute we follow josiah and his friend deja who are on their last year of working at the pumpkin patch so they're making the most of it as their last year. They're going off to college. So Deja is going to help Josiah finally like buck up and go and talk to the girl that he's been like obsessed with ever since he started working at this pumpkin patch. But then along the journey, she Deja is going to make it her priority to try everything that she loves like food wise about the pumpkin patch. Um, but then they f hit some bumps in the roads that caused Josiah to take those as like hints that they shouldn't that he shouldn't like go and meet this girl or like finally like step up and talk to this girl he sees them as like not meant to be moments um but Deja's like no snap out of it you're gonna do it um uh, but then they end up discovering that they actually um both realize that they actually have more feelings than friendship for one another so this is very best friends to lover trope which i love and the story's so cute the graphics are so adorable i love this one and i definitely can't wait to pick it back up just to read it all over again so the last book i will be talking about is city of ghosts by victoria schwab which is the same author as 
a darker shade of magic um i gave this one a four out of five stars i liked it i was kind of at first nervous that it was going to be a little creepy but then i realized it is middle grade so they can't make it too scary or maybe it was scary but because i'm not a child it wasn't as scary to me as i thought it was going to be but i really enjoyed it i loved the whole sixth sense aspects to it we follow a girl named cassidy who has a near-death experience and this causes her to have like the sixth sense um type of thing where she can see ghosts and she can jump from the real world to the dead world called the veil and she can see like these ghosts and like their story and how they died and not only that she has a ghost who a ghost best friend um he helps her his name is jacob and he helps her come back from the veil when she gets stuck yeah i really enjoyed the story i thought it was so good i liked the like folk tales in it as well you get a little bit of that um and then just the whole like ghost aspects to it as well like it was just a really good read i definitely feel like it was the perfect read for october because of the ghostness the spookiness the hauntedness of it i really enjoyed it i thought it was really cool i was gonna say cute but it wasn't cute it was really cool um and i'm glad i didn't get scared i mean there was like a few parts where i thought it was gonna be like super spooky but it ended up just being like very subtle and not so scary at least for me i'm pretty sure if like my daughter was reading it she would have been like a little like on the spooky side yeah, I did pick up another book that I don't have with me. It's still on my bookshelf, and that was Brown Girl Ghosted by Minty Doss. That one I actually DNF'd. I did not like it. I got to, like, page 50-something, and I had to DNF it. I felt like... Okay, guys, hear me out. I'm not very picky when it comes to editing. I don't... If I can understand what's being told, that's all that matters. I don't nitpick at, like, misspelled words or whatever, but this seriously felt like... I had to literally read a paragraph about five times and I still couldn't understand what was being said or there was times where I didn't understand who was talking I didn't know if it was like narrator or the main character or somebody else like I just could not figure out who was talking in the story um, and not only that there was right from the very beginning there was racial slurs which you know was a little kind of like Eh, I cannot like I can't believe people are actually like this which it's true there are people that are like that I can believe it but it's just it was very like a lot <laughs> yeah so I had to DNF it it just was not for me I just I couldn't get past the whole fact that I just I was so confused and yeah I just was not liking it at all so yeah so that is it thank you guys for watching if you stuck by this long i thank you for watching this wrap up i hope you guys enjoyed it um if you've read any of these books let me know down below i would really like to know your thoughts um if you do plan on reading any of these books let me know as well um so yeah that is it that is it for today's video i hope you guys are having a very great day night wherever you are and you're staying safe and i will see you guys on the next one bye